when we start moving inside our pelvis, there is the experience of birth. There's the, the experience of both. There's the experience of giving birth as a mother and being born as a baby. And um, this, I used to teach this very early on because it just happened. I was doing the holographic breathing. At that time, I was much more aware of the different movements through the body. And I was kind of seeing if I could work out what was happening where. And um, coming to the pelvis, there was working with the movements outside of the pelvis but as I got higher in the energies and it may have been when I was going through the lung points but it was definitely by the time I got to the blue energies and higher energies I would drop or that area that those energies were I would drop inside the pelvis and the experience as soon as I dropped in it felt you know, I know I'm a man, but it felt to me like what it would feel like for a woman to start giving birth through her pelvis, this memory and system and kind of movement of the pelvis started. And I would get drawn down into it and head first. So there was my pelvis as the female and my head dropping down into the pelvis as the baby. Uh, and the first time I went through, it was like a total shock. And it felt very nice to start off with when I was just, I thought I was fully inside the pelvis, but I wasn't. I was just sitting into the top wings. And at a certain point, I just dropped inside into the inner pelvis, it's like this clamp around my head. And the pelvis went solid and I breathed for a while. I didn't know I was going to get born through it. I was just with this whole thing going off. And in the end, I kind of gave birth to myself or that's what happened. And I brought myself to my own breast and breastfed myself. And it was like holographic breathing with the breastfeeding. And I started teaching that in groups. And it seemed that the men whether they were experiencing the same as the women i don't know but there was that experience for both men and women having the experience of giving birth and being born and for me that is a primary kind of yin yang um or polarity, or I don't know the other word, um, when something's been split into two, um, is being born as the baby and giving birth as a mother. And they're normally treated as separately. And I, I remember kind of in the 70s and 80s when I was doing quite a lot of, there was quite a lot of work around then. Oh, you, you've got to go through your birth trauma and kind of re-experiencing and re-experiencing this experience of being born. And I, I realized in this experience of both together, one, it's called a birth trauma, but really it, it, that puts it in the playing fields of being a trauma rather than the experience. You have to, you know, be careful with how, how you use words. But if you are the baby and the mother, then you're not at effect of it anymore. There's not an area of it that you don't have any control over. You know, you're not in control of what your mother was doing. But with this, there, it was clearing births from this lifetime and from past lives. Um, but also there was just the intrinsic quality of birth, the mother and the baby. And 
the energies would bounce backwards and forth between the pelvis and the cranium till they would kind of be one. And as they come together, rather than it being this thing that you have to keep on going through or whatever, they would just melt because they mirrored exactly the experience of giving birth, the experience of being born. And if you think about it, if you notice the different energies we've been working with in the face and cranium and the different movements of the bones and how the different bones relate to the mirroring bones in the pelvis, as the baby is being born in a way the different plates of the head are engaging in a similar way with their same energies in the pelvis. And what the mother is experiencing can't really be divided from what the baby is experiencing. And I could feel this dialogue between my own pelvis and my own head just talking and balancing and working through the spine. And I realized as the baby is being born, it's coming down into the mother's pelvis. She is playing out how she gives birth. And then that is in a way also being imprinted in the baby's cranium, which is then also being reflected in the baby's pelvis. So when the baby is born, it's got a similar kind of structures going on in its pelvis and cranium. So if it's a girl, when she comes to give birth, she gets pregnant, giving birth, she's passing on that same set of circumstances from when she was born. She's picking it up in her head from her mother, who got it from her mother, who got it from her mother. It's being logged into her pelvis, and then in the rites of birth, she's passing it on to her children to one extent or another i'm not saying it's exactly the same but to one extent or another so these behavioral patterns or physical patterns or sexual abuse in one form or another or the way ah ah it's funny how things dawn on you as you go through. Is passed on generation to generation. It's just dawned off again. I, I got. I know what it was. In the yellow energies, we really hit. I wasn't expecting, and we'll carry on with it. But on the suppression of the female sexuality and that will affect both men and women and obviously that suppression will also play out in uh, what's happening in the pelvis especially if there's sexual abuse if they're not treated properly raped or not really being made love to it affects the whole pelvis so when they give birth physiologically and energy that energetically that is being logged into the baby's cranium and its pelvis so when that baby gives birth is passing it on again so maybe that is why it's gone down that route maybe we are taking into account on a because I, I feel it is being brought up to the surface in a lot of ways at, at, at the minute 
um, and, and maybe not just between men and women, but different, you know, there's a lot about gender at the minute, there's a lot about race um, uh, and how we've subjugated each other as a human race in different ways. So th this is a way it can be passed from mother to daughter to mother to daughter, and then to a daughter or a son in the last time. And when we play those two out together with the intrinsic qualities of birth rather than the memory of birth, then it starts to dissolve the whole historic karma. And it can be my experience of it when I was teaching those groups was, whereas before I was wanting to experience my birth, but it, it wasn't whole because I wasn't experiencing the mother part of me, the other side of the dichotomy. I was just experiencing from the baby, but when you experience them both together and they can reflect and play off and equally balance, you're not having to deal with the trauma anymore. And that, that is how it was described then, a, a birth trauma. I don't know how it's described now. You, you are just part of a healing process. It's moved into the positive. And what is coming to mind, just... Um, I worked with children quite a lot in craniosacral therapy. Uh, and what one mother was bringing her daughter along, who was very young, uh, I don't know how old, but she was still kind of a baby, maybe two, something like that, two or three, uh, I, maybe two, I think. And she couldn't bond with this child at all. Um, we did a couple of sessions and then in the third session I was hardly touching this baby but she really wanted to be held upside down she was really going into this birth process and I so the mother held her kind of upside down or at an angle down I just held the baby's head in a very gentle way and she just started screaming and the mother was really worried and I say no this isn't a normal crying she's playing out her birth and she started hitting her mother with her little fists and the mother got it and she said yeah I know it was hard for you it was really hard for me as well and even though the baby wasn't at an age where it could understand what she was saying this communication happened between the baby and the mother and rather than it being this upset that would just carry on and on just that well it was spoken but the baby couldn't understand it that energy going between it vanished and the baby bonded with her and that was it, kind of over. When the baby got, it wasn't a victim and the mother wasn't doing it to her on purpose. So this is a bit like that. And it breaks the bonds to our karmic past on all sorts of levels. Now, saying all of that, I'm not going to take you down that route. We're going to take a different route. We're going to drop into the pelvis. But we're not going to turn upside down and we're not going to drop in the head first and sink right. We're going to be in the pelvis so you can feel. Now, you may or may not feel it as a quality of being birthed because we're only touching 
on the edge of it. But my experience of when I drop into the pelvis is I'm instantaneously in the womb. And when I say holographic breathing is how, or I normally say, I think holographic breathing is how we breathed in the womb. I don't really think that. My experience of it is that. That it can bring you that experience of being in the womb. And what we're going to do is we're going to match the energies of inside the pelvis with the energies of the cranium and of the face and let it balance back and forth without actually the two coming together. So you'll still be upright. The pelvis will be at the bottom. The head will be at the top. And you may feel it as a mother and baby, or you may just feel it as a polarity balancing. But for me, the aches and strains and things like that of the pelvis, you can work on them separately for as long as you want. And you have trouble having them resolve. But if you mirror them with the same places in the face and cranium and you get this dialogue happening back and forth, through the spine then they just melt into light and, and you just go deeper now when we do it that way around when we do it the other way around and you drop into the pelvis like your head is going down into your own pelvis that goes forwards in time that takes you into birth until you're born and then you put yourself on the breast if you do it this way and this dialogue goes back and forth you start moving back in time so you become younger in the womb and i don't really know where this is leading whether this is just going to be a one-off working with this particular dynamic or whether it's going to lead into spending some time investigating the different ages of development through the womb and conception we'll just have to see how, how it goes also i noticed a yawning there this place we go to is that place that knocks everybody out in holographic breathing when we move into that space of being in the womb as a baby, the intellect isn't there. So you go into a place where the intellect isn't. And most people aren't used to that. And in a way, you just go, oh, fuck, bump, <laughs> you just go to sleep. So the other aspect of that, when you drop into that place of being in the womb, is you start getting an energy rotating through the brain. And if you, become, if you can become aware of that, rather than passing out, then there's a bit like a, you move into a whole other reality. And you've got to remember, at that age, the brain is still developing. It's not been molded by the intellect, all the passageways are open in all the different ways. Huge amount of stem cells are there and it's growing. So there's the potential for the brain to heal in quite a fast way. Now, I don't know if that's true, but that's how I experience is that you're no longer held by this thing that the brain just seems to get older and older until we die. It seems like new stem cells can open. You become used to all the dialogue and all the different patterns that have been programmed into it. You get used to a space before they were there. 
so they don't bind you so strongly when you're not there. So this releases chains in so many ways. 